Okay, so first up this week we've had a couple of really interesting new papers come out on human evolution. As I am sure you are aware, unless you're one of those people that believes Bigfoot is a Neanderthal walking around North America somewhere, today there is just one species of human alive. Us. If you go back just a few tens of thousands of years, however, that was not the case. There were Neanderthals running around, there was us, there were a diminutive hobbit-sized species of humans living on an island in Indonesia, although there's still some argument about whether or not they count as a species. And there was also a group called the Denisovans. Now, we only know about this group from a toe bone, a finger bone, and a few teeth. But from these few bone fragments, we managed to obtain a DNA profile, which was significantly different from both us and Neanderthals. We know nothing else about this species. We know that they were humans, we know that they had toes and fingers and teeth, and we know vaguely where they lived, but that's about it. Now, a few years ago, scientists announced that traces of Neanderthal DNA had been found in the modern human genome. Crucially, this was only found in populations outside of Africa, suggesting that Neanderthals mated with the ancestors of Europeans shortly after they left Africa. Now scientists have announced that not only have they found Neanderthal and Denisovan DNA in our genome, they've also found traces of an unknown fourth hominin group in our own genome. So what this basically means is that not only was there a fourth group of hominins running around coexisting with our ancestors, they also mated with our ancestors and contributed to our modern genome. So you are part anatomically modern human, you are probably part Neanderthal, part Denisovan, and part... we don't really know. Another paper this week also involves Neanderthals. Fragments of DNA from viruses that infected Neanderthals have been found in modern human genomes. The vast majority of our DNA is made up of non-coding DNA, DNA that does not code for proteins. Around 10% of that comes from viruses that once infected our ancestors. They hijack the genome, insert themselves in and get carried along. DNA from the Denisovan bone fragments we discussed earlier were compared to Neanderthal DNA and the DNA of modern cancer sufferers. The results showed that viruses that infected Neanderthals nearly half a million years ago can still be found in our genomes today. Moving over to physics, astronomers have observed one of the brightest gamma ray bursts ever recorded. Gamma ray bursts can occur at the onset of a supernova before a massive star collapses into a black hole. The light from this gamma ray burst took 4 billion years to reach us meaning that the parent star exploded hundreds of millions of years before life on Earth even began. Light from gamma rays is approximately 500,000 times more energetic than visible light. Information from this gamma ray burst was published in five papers this week, and the extensive information collected from this gamma ray burst has been described as the benchmark which will influence all future research. Back to biology, a study found that bacteria are capable of absorbing and integrating DNA from long dead organisms, even those as long dead as the mammoth. Short generation times aren't the only reason bacteria can evolve so quickly. They're capable of absorbing and recycling DNA from dead organisms into their own genome. This is called horizontal gene transfer and it's one of the main processes in which things like antibiotic resistance can spread through a bacterial population. In a study published this week, a bacterial population managed to pick up and absorb DNA from a woolly mammoth that's been dead for 40,000 years. Lastly, my favourite story this week, a new dinosaur has been announced. And not just any dinosaur, this is one of the top three largest predatory dinosaurs ever discovered in the USA. Named Seats Micororum, it lived about 100 million years ago and fills a large gap in the fossil record. Up until now, no large predators were known for this period and location. It probably terrorised early tyrannosaurs and they were only able to rise to prominence after it went extinct. The fossil found was a juvenile, but the researchers speculate that an adult specimen could have reached 30 feet from head to tail. That's it from me guys. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next week.